Nowadays in the web, we can literally animate anything we want to the 3D if we add additional JavaScript. But this button here is actually made in pure CSS and I want to show you how. We will be starting from scratch, so if you think you're an expert in CSS, then I added a chapter timestamp for you so you can jump immediately to the snakish part. Oh and hey, I have a few other web development videos on this channel, so if you want me to make more, then just hit the subscribe button and I'll know. What more to say? Let's code! So we have a blackish like button which has kind of like a blackish border and when I hover it I kind of get like a moving snake around the border. Also there's a shadow below the button. Okay let's start with the simple things first. I'm going to use an a tag and set some domain for example for the state manager and this a tag should represent our button. Now let's style this. We know that the text color is white. We know it's bold. We don't want text decoration or the background. We're using some fancy linear gradient. Let's add a bit of padding, maybe like a bigger font size. And then we want to have border radius. Looking good. Now we add a border, one pixel solid, kind of like blackish, and a little bit more padding on the left and right side. Okay, let's compare. Looking good. An A tag by default has display inline, so I'm also adding display block to this one. Otherwise, we're being in trouble later. On hover, the button gets slightly smaller. Let's do that. When the button is hovered, we use transform and scale with like 95%. Okay, the scaling is good, but it doesn't animate, so transition all 200 milliseconds and then easing. That's looking good. Okay, next thing. Let's add the shadow on the bottom. That isn't a regular box shadow because it isn't even the size of the button. So we'll just use a simple trick. We want to position that shadow as pseudo element inside of that button. To position things properly, first we give the button itself position relative. And then we can do position absolute inside of it. And we will not add a new element, but we will simply say we use the pseudo element after. And for this to work, it needs a content, otherwise it's not shown. And it's going to be display block. And it should be kind of like 60% of the button width. And maybe like 7 pixels high. And to see where it is, we'll give it background red. So let's position it absolutely. And say it should be 100% from the top. And it looks like it's centered, but in fact, that's just coincidence. So we make sure that it's always centered by saying it should go 50% from the left. Then it's starting at 50%. And now to fix that it's actually in the middle, we say move it back by its own size by 50%. So basically move the half of it to the left again. Let's move it a little bit lower, maybe like 109%. Okay, position is good. Now let's use a blackish color, maybe with an opacity of, yeah, 75, that's good. And now the only thing left for this one is to blur it, like 9 pixels maybe, or 6. Okay, we need a different color. Yep, that one works. Let's compare. The shadow should only be shown when it's hovered. So initially it's not visible, opacity 0. To make sure it gets a smooth animation, we add transition all and like 200 milliseconds. And now when the button is hovered, we want to update the opacity of its pseudo element. So opacity 1, let's check. Yeah, nice. Let's switch to the original. Now the next thing is going to be a little bit more complex, but let me show you step by step. What looks like additional borders actually isn't really a border. It's actually an element being animated. I'll add a new div and I call the class just shiny. Now what we want is that this element gets the same shape as the button itself. So what we want to do is shiny has width and height of the button and to see where it is we use background blue. Now the dimensions are wrong because we're not yet using position absolute. 
dimensions are fine, but we have to put it to the top left. Okay. And this is the exact same thing as this. Now that's the first step, but the problem is this is in the foreground. It should be in the background. So basically we have to move most of the button styles to the inside such that the second one overlays the first one. I'll show you. So we wrap this one with a div and this is going to be our button class, not this one. And this one's only going to be our wrapper class. And now we need to make sure that the wrapper class gets position relative as well. Save it. Now if you look closely you can see the shiny element in the background because it doesn't have rounded borders yet. Also we now see text decoration again so we need to give the a tag the text decoration none. And we can get rid of it in here. And now we give the shiny element the same border radius. Now it's in the back and it's basically invisible, but this is going to be our border. And this is easy to achieve. We simply say the button, so this one, gets margin of whatever our border size is, for example, five pixels. Let's use three. So now that looks like a border, but in fact it isn't because basically it's just an element in the background. But the question remains, how do we make this crawl around the borders? The basis of this looking good is a well-chosen linear gradient. For example, this one. Now this already looks cool, but isn't moving at all. And a naive idea is to use something like animating this one. So for example, you can say initially the background size is zero width and 100% height. And when we're hovering the wrapper, we can say that background size is now going to go full width also add transition okay let's see how that works there's kind of weird things happening and that's simply because it repeats the background so let's add background repeat no repeat That's not looking bad, but it's not comparable to the version that we want. And I can tell you this isn't doable with any background animation thing. For this, we need to go a little bit further. So the base idea here is creating a quadrant which will move and which we will then mask. So basically that quadrant is going to be our shiny element. Let's make it visible first. Now with inset you can define the rectangle that is being created with position absolute. First we'll use top, then right, then bottom, then left. And we want it to start at 50% from the top, at the right edge, so 0 from right, at the bottom, and 50% from the left side. So now you can see we created some kind of quadrant here. But in fact I actually want to make this quadrant even bigger. I don't want it to start at the right edge, but actually further than that. And the same goes for bottom. Actually, let's do a little bit more. Now the next step is to create an animation that will rotate this thing 360 degrees. So let's create that one. At 0%, it should be where it is, so 0 degrees. At 33, we go to 120. At 66, we go to 210. And at 100, we made a full circle. All right, let's add this animation now to our element. Okay, so now it's rotating, but it's rotating around itself, but it should be rather rotating around the button. So the button center. And the button center is basically the top left of our rectangle. So we can just say transform origin is top left zero zero. And now it's actually rotating around the center of the button. If you don't like the stops, we just say it's linear. Now we are very close, but let me stop the animation right now because it's annoying. We only want it on hover. So we add shiny on hover is going to animate. Yep. Now we need to cage that moving thing or better said cut off everything we don't want. We don't need an actual clip mask for that. We can simply give the wrapper overflow hidden. That looks better, but now it's missing the radius, so we add that one as well. Now let's see what happens.
that's already very close but first of all it doesn't look as smooth and second of all the button is being scaled instead of the wrapper so we have to fix that one. So when the wrapper is being hovered it should scale down a bit. For that it also needs the transition. Let's see. Yeah that looks way better. We're nearly done. Now we want to smooth up those sharp cuts. You go to your shiny element and you simply give it a blur filter of 5 pixels. And now your snake looks super smooth, but our shadow got missing. That's simple to explain. We have added overflow hidden to our wrapper element. And the shadow is in the wrapper element or more specifically within the button in the wrapper element. But even if it was directly in the wrapper element, it would be still cut off because of the overflow hidden. So instead of making the wrapper element overflow hidden, we just use an inside element, which wraps the shiny and the button. And now that inside element gets the overflow hidden and the border radius and as well position relative. And the wrapper, which doesn't have overflow hidden anymore, is getting the shadow that is now part of the button. So we just simply copy this one, move it up, and we say wrapper after. Now the shadow is attached to the wrapper. And there's just one thing we have to fix. On hover, we need to make it visible. So we're scrolling down where it says button hover after, and we say wrapper hover after. Now the shadow is back and the snake is running smooth. Getting creative with CSS is just an awesome thing. And the more stuff gets added to modern CSS and modern browsers, the less trickery we have to do. But actually, I like the trickery. It kind of like opens up your mind to a new world of thinking. Feel free to share your fancy version of that button in the comment section. I'd like to check those out. See ya.